I understand anatomy and I can finally draw anything I want. Wrong. Stiff, lifeless poses. Oh boy, dynamic poses are a beast. Luckily, it's a pretty quick fix. All you have to do is buy my brush packs, online courses and merch. Only then will you truly be a real artist. Stupidity aside, I've only started drawing people around last year and even now I only draw characters rarely. I draw characters for fun and I plan on keeping it that way for the foreseeable future. That being said, if I can draw half decent people, so can you. Starting with the basics, T-pose, A-pose or reference sheets, this is often the stiffest and the lifeless your character will look. And it's not really a problem. If you're designing outfits, hairstyles or colour schemes, the stiffer the pose the better. Better yet, use a fashion drawing figure. The symmetry will allow you to generate new clothing and style ideas insanely fast. These simple positions are all about design, troubleshooting and consistency. So stick to a full frame simple pose. It's easier, it's quicker, it's the right choice. Just a heads up, I'm using photo reference for all the characters I draw. Even though I make their legs longer and their heads bigger, I still use a real life reference for all my people. Okay, so we're happy with our design and we want to start adding a little bit of life to the characters. You can do this with a simple environment. Understanding the whereabouts of your characters will help you pick up what pose to choose. I'm a sucker for books and libraries, so I chose to draw a bookshelf inside a library. Now, with the characters in an environment, it instantly added a bit of movement. However, the simple perspective and the distance from the characters still leaves them feeling a little bit stiff. But once you've drawn the background, you can't really change it. So the next tip is to first draw your character and later build the background to fit them. With a blank canvas, you have no limitations of how to pose your character. Simply put, choose a dynamic reference photo and start to draw. I'm starting with a red sketch, focusing only on anatomy, making sure my proportions are correct, but still stylizing the legs, torso and head. Next, I did a rough sketch, planning out the outfit, hair and face. Then used a clean sketch to tie it all together. I like this multi-stage approach, it gives me ample time to notice flaws and reflect on how the pose is turning out. If you're short for time, you might as well just do a rough sketch and then go straight to ink. But now that my sketch is ready for ink, when inking out there are many different choices. You can go with heavy weighted lines, it looks bold but also a little bit rigid. You can keep it clean with light crisp lines or ditch the line work entirely and rather use a gradient to distinguish between different forms. There are many different ways to ink out a sketch, but these are the three that I use most. As for backgrounds, I love an old chaise long, and it fits the pose pretty well, so throw some color onto it and call it a day. At this point, you can add two-tone shading, soul shading, full render, but I find simple color fun and easy, so I'm definitely gonna stick with that. And all done, we've got a nice, quick character. To summarize, pick the right reference pose. There really is a valid reason as to why so many artists use photo reference packs. They work. If you're struggling with anatomy, the best thing that worked for me was just to draw a ton of full body sketches as well as solo drawing separate parts of the figure. For the rest of the video, I'm just going to ramble on about some random art questions and try to predict some of the comments. First off, I mainly get all my reference packs from ArtStation. If I can't find one I like, I'll look through stock photo websites. However, if I need male reference, I just set up a tripod and camera and photograph myself. Yes, I do use the stabilization tool for characters, and I do agree that going freehand can provide crisper and more dramatic lines. I normally work on backgrounds and 3D modeling, so I'm well aware my characters aren't at the professional level just yet, but it's nice to have a section of art that isn't related to work no deadlines, no pressure. It helps remind me that art can be fun and unique. It's not always a job. Oh, it's little and broken, but still good. I've still got quite a lot to learn about art. I've watched a lot of tutorials and I've spent time with beginner artists and I've met artists much better than myself. So I think I can offer some advice when it comes to learning this. My first thing is, no advice is often better than bad advice. Next, be careful with textured brushes. They are useful tools, but they prevent many artists from learning the basic brush controls. They become a crutch that you completely depend on. Do not limit yourself to one medium. All art fundamentals are interchangeable. Being a good photographer will make you a better 3D modeler. 
and then being able to take a break from mediums prevents burnout but you are still actively improving and practicing your artistic skills in another field. Acquire your teacher's skills, not their style. I started to notice this more and more, but you can tell when a student only learns from a single artist. Your goal isn't to mimic someone's style, but learn from their skills to develop your own. You don't want to just become a slightly worse copy. Know why you are creating art. Art is tremendously difficult, and without proper self-motivation, you will struggle. Having a clear, attainable goal is a must when it comes to pursuit of art. And lastly, surround yourself with peers in your field. Having friends who are passionate about art will push you to improve far quicker than any tutorial ever will. And yeah, that's about it. I hope these quick tips helped, and as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos.